Now, uh, when we look at consumption, we generally look at consumption in terms of uh, consumption baskets. Mm -hmm. Because one person, be it uh, an individual or an individual household, consumes a number of things. In a particular day in our life, we consume so many things. Yeah. Morning we have tea, then we have breakfast, then in between snacks, then we are consuming power. Then we are consuming data in our uh, mobile. <laughs> so, so many things we are consuming a day. So, consumption then is generally visualized in terms of consumption baskets. So, all that I consume in a particular day or particular week or particular month, we call it as a consumption basket. So, uh, so what I consume in a day uh, might not be the same thing that I consume in a in 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 the next day sometimes. Correct, correct. Yeah, some of the things will be the same. Correct. Morning correct. tea I am having every day sometimes. Yeah. But there could be other things that might come and go kind of a thing. Mm. So typically then we use uh, a monthly consumption for a household mm. to assess consumption. So consumption basket then for a household. For one month, for example, is a useful information. Is yes. a useful information in terms of assessing the demand. Demand, yeah. uh -huh. and that is where our data analysis becomes very important. Okay, so here I think there is some simple thing that we did. Okay, we got one of our TAs to go out. Okay, and uh, Riaz was kind enough to go and talk to three households. Okay, one household is a kind of a. So let's say poor, okay. 15,000 rupees, I don't know, would you call it poor, 15,000 rupees a month? Not exactly poor. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. lower, lower middle slant, income or yeah. whatever, yeah. yeah. 15,000 rupees a month income. Yeah. The second household is 30,000 rupees okay. uh, per month yeah. uh, kind of income. Yeah. And the third household is uh, 50 or 60, I don't recall, 50 or 60,000 rupees per month okay. income. So, we are now, basically we are we have three strata of households. Yes. Kind of it yes. covers some yeah. middle in the middle, I mean, yeah. there are of course very rich people who earn yeah. Yeah. much more than 60,000 yeah. rupees, and there are people who are earning only a few thousand rupees per month, also yeah. five, six thousand rupees a month, yeah. very, very poor. Yeah. But this kind of represents in the middle somewhere, it represents three kinds of households. Yeah. So he went and actually talked to the households and asked them what do you spend and got their monthly expenditures. Okay. And we have it actually as data. Okay. Fantastic. So, I just wanted you to look at this and then yeah. observe and you know what this yeah. is for the first the first chart here is yeah. for the house which has yeah. 15,000 rupees yeah. income. Yeah. So, so uh, first important thing to uh, understand is this is the uh, income limit or what we call as the uh, household budget. Total money available. Available. Monthly. Yeah. So, all consumption decisions of this household then has to be within this 15,000. 15, Otherwise, you can borrow. Yeah. Uh -huh, right. Yeah. Of course. But you know how long and then repayment, all those decisions. So, it will not be a, it will not be something that can be sustained. Yeah. Right. So, this is the upper limit in terms of the resources that are available. Hmm. One. Second, um, this is a very good example of a typical survey. We, we talked about survey in terms of assessing demand. No? Mm -hmm. This is exactly what a survey does. Mm -hmm. In terms of, you know, there is a questionnaire and then goes and asks, you know, what is your income and how are you spending your income across, you know, various uh, uh, items that you consume, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, look at, uh, look at uh, uh, household rent. This person with this income now just does not have the resources to purchase and own house. Mm, mm. So, that is basically in terms of a rental, rented house and close to 50%, 41% of the entire income is paid on rent. That is perfectly possible because this is an urban household mm. and uh, the, the uh, household is staying in a prime location in an urban region. Maybe too because the Income might be coming because of that. Income might be coming. So, for the job or for some other activity, some other reason that person will have, that household will have to stay in this part of the city. Mm. So, 41% is, 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 is very, on, very high. It's very high mm. on our rent. But at the same time, um, this uh, household has 
as a substantial expenditure in terms of monthly rations. And when we talk of rations, mostly it is in terms of, you know, food grains and subsidized, subsidized food grains and mm. other things, which is, which is very important because that forms a huge portion of the uh, daily consumption. Yeah, that is commodities that are needed for your daily consumption. Because to be alive, actually. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And, and not only to be, to be uh, active enough to work. Uh -huh, that and, is another important. And earn this. Uh, earn this 15,000. Yeah. So, rations then consume quite a bit. But, um, children going to school, you, you have to spend uh, a, a fraction of your budget on that. And then there is transport. Because in urban setting, you now what we find uh, is uh, workers actually commute either their own transport or using some other means of transport. This person and doesn't seem to have own transport, right? Because yeah, eight percent maybe. Uh, uh, I'm not sure you have seen other expenses. Yeah, if it is one, like yeah. So maybe maybe I think they are using it for public, you know, using public and uh, private combination of transport in terms correct. of you know, uh, uh, and 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 very very uh, important thing is that. Entertainment is very less. Mm. Yeah, water is is very less. Mm. Entertainment is very less. Yes, that is that is the question that we started off. There is a trade off. Now the trade off for this person is, uh, should I really spend uh, eight percent for on my child's education, mm. and spend only um, only two percent for entertainment? Or should I reduce here to 4% and then increase this to 6%? Yeah, nobody will do that. <laughs> it's, it's prioritization. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. 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 So, that's a trade-off. That's a trade-off. Yeah. So, important important question comes in terms of entertainment. Meat, yes, I would like to eat, but given the given the uh, prices of, of, of commodities, well, uh, I am, I am, you know, consuming more of rations and I am um, having my, you know, uh, activities or work done with the energies that I am getting from that. Yeah, electricity 4% mandatorily, yeah, but still I am very, you know, uh, prudent in terms of using electricity. Yeah, uh, perhaps a, a very uh, kind of an outlier thing is medical because there is somebody who is not, not Sick, well. Yeah. So, that is why, you know, every month you have to spend so much on, on medical. But at the same time, that was also correlated with the other expenditure that is on vegetables and fruits because because somebody is not well, there is also a conscious decision I to see. consume more fruits. of vegetables and fruits. I see. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you don't want to increase <laughs> this into this medical expenses into 8% and then cut down this into 2%. So there is also a conscious decision in terms of that. Yeah. So, uh, this gives a typical consumption basket and this is what exactly we were referring in our earlier discussion and it also gives us the kind of trade-off that a person with this limited income actually faces living in an urban location. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so this is one individual's data. If you have 100 individuals or 1000 individuals surveyed like this. All of the same similar income, 15,000 rupees range. Uh, range. Same bracket, income bracket. Then we can draw certain patterns, patterns out of that. Right. And that is where, you know, it becomes very useful in terms of, well, uh, if if everyone is basically um, spending only 2% on, on entertainment, then there is no point in terms of producing entertainment for this kind of consumers because the market itself is very small. It's also possible that they are consuming entertainment that is free, right? Like, for example, they could be watching Doordarshan. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure yeah, but then, the quality of content, but yeah. just saying that they have no other choice, so they watch cable TV, which is free or some free content. Could very well be. But or then, on the mobile phone nowadays, everything is free. Yeah, but then uh, the the kind of a producer decision. Yeah, as a producer, of you don't get money for it. Yeah, I will not. Uh, you know, very be very keen to enter into this market because uh, people are are spending less. Correct, correct, correct. That is the kind of an inference that we draw from. Right. This analysis then. Yeah. So now shall we look at the next one? This is thirty thousand rupees. Okay. Yeah. So so shall we now look at the house with thirty thousand rupees? This gives another very interesting kind of uh, of a picture. Hmm. Here we are not uh, seeing um, rent as a major kind of a thing. Oh, it's gone, huh? The previous guy had rent, right? Big. In fact, 41%. 41%. This one has no rent at all. This person has no 
Right. Which means that they are staying in own house. Mm. And uh, in contrast, we find that education is little more. So, they are able to spend more on education. But at the same time, medical is also slightly more. Uh. And they have purchased a, a, a vehicle on loan. So, EMI is taking 10% of their total income. And we find that there is also the consumption of internet. So, the, when the ones... That's also entertainment, right? Or we don't know. Okay. Maybe for work or yeah, you know, yeah. with the online school and things of that sort might be. Hmm. Yeah. Entertainment is, is, is... Last time it was 2%, now it is 3%. Mm. It has increased. Mm. But there is also another category that has come that is online shopping. Yeah. And insurance is very, very... That's for vehicle, I think, no? Vehicle or health or, you know, ah. yeah. given given this medical oh, it could be person, could be there is a possibility. So, we find that consumption basket is broader, no? broader now. But there is, there, is a, there is a kind of a slight anomaly which I can, I can see here because uh, the rations are, are still very high here. 20, the earlier was 24, I think. Yeah. In this 25 here. In, in here it has increased. So, that that's... Is they consuming more food? Huh? <laughs> that, that's or they are not necessarily buying from a PDS. Yeah. And that could be another reason, right? The other possibility is that we have no idea of the family size here. Ah, it could be bigger family. If the family size is also this thing, then this with this income, they will have to spend... Uh, more on food. More on food. Yeah. So, we have uh, we have now two, two very uh, different kind of consumption baskets. Yeah. In the earlier consumption basket, house rent was very high. Ration was the next thing. Here, we ration is predominantly the bigger one, but education is, is very, very important. So, Perhaps it could be a bigger family where more than, you know, one more or two children, yeah. children are studying, hmm. some in higher institutions hmm. or you know, some in schools and things of that sort. But there is also, they have a vehicle. So, instead of instead of other uh, you know, transport, they have vehicle maintenance that is coming. So, the consumption basket then is entirely different. Hmm. 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 So... As, so, the question that comes up naturally is when the income goes up, would we naturally see such a consumption basket change or? We can we can safely draw one inference that consumption basket actually varies. Will change. Yeah. We will know that. Yeah. But how it will change, we don't know. We don't know. And For that, that, we have to look at some aggregate data. Aggregate data and large scale data. Like this national sample, sample survey. Sample survey uh. data. You know? And uh, that gives us an idea in, uh, as to uh, what is happening in terms of, you know, educational expenses in the country or what is happening in terms of medical expenses in the country and things of that sort. Okay, should we look at the next one? Here, this is 50,000 rupees. Yeah, this seems to be, uh, this seems to be another very interesting case because uh, they have, they have purchased a flat or, or a house oh. now mm. and there is a loan, 17% goes to that. There is also a commitment to the family that is being sent. Mm. So the, there is there is some money being sent to parents. Yeah. Now, uh, so we 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 call it as something like you know a, a kind of uh, dependent population. It's not consumption really. Right? It is not consumption, but the it is it is the uh, breakup of the expenditure. Uh -huh. So you it's have a, to, in the sense it's a consumption of the parents. Parents will be consuming. Will be consuming that. So, you have to ideally net out this 21% and see the basket mm, mm. to see this individual's consumption. But there is a very interesting entry here compared to the earlier uh, earlier kind of a, of a family. There is something called a chit fund or something which is a savings thing. <laughs> Correct. This is again not consumption, uh. but monthly there is an outflow here from this. You know, it's a consumption, right? Because they, they well, normally what they do, they put some money and then after 10 months they get they, something. And they will consume with that a bigger some item. Some bigger or, item. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of the smaller item. Now. Yeah. And then entertainment is there. Insurance is there. This is very interesting kind of a thing. Uh, dinner. Dinner going out. Yeah. So, you find that the consumer's behavior has changed drastically, I would say. Because in our earlier, uh, sorry, in our earlier uh, thing, well, very meager expenditure on meat and fruits and things of that sort, 3 to 4 percentage. Here, uh, Dinner on, in restaurants itself is very high. 
<laughs> yes sir yeah yeah and uh, electricity is also higher their electricity is slightly less yeah and uh, education is is slightly less yeah but as a percentage of 50000 yeah so so actually in, the quantum might in be. absolute numbers this, this will be very high and rations is only 10% again ah, ah. that is because you know the numbers are you can't just keep eating i guess <laughs> so you want a point you are ah. yeah so so now we have a very uh, interesting uh, kind of a set of of consumers now yeah. a consumer uh, living in a rented house trying to manage with that uh, 15000 a month with a slightly narrow consumption basket second consumer uh, higher income 30000 yes but uh, i think the family size is slightly bigger so that you know again ration expense is more education is more and uh, well Uh, need to really spend some something in terms of children's education and other things. So has bought a vehicle as well as there is a maintenance for the vehicle mm. and the consumption basket is different. And they are doing online shopping. Online shopping, <laughs> yeah, because I think that is because there are children in this family. Ah, that's possible. Yeah. So Who, there is a demand. Savvy, that, ah, also, yeah. yeah. And here we find that uh, going out to eat. <laughs> going out to eat. Yeah. I, I, I think this is basically a. a a uh, uh, slightly younger couple perhaps and then with uh, aged parents living ha ah, very likely no to correct se- uh, they to send money, money home ah. at the same time there is a, a child or, or two who has to be you know sent mm-hmm. to school mm-hmm. but at the same time there is some some bit of a of a uh, fund that is available for going out or whatever kind of so so the point that we, we really want to emphasize here is that uh, looking at this kind of consumption basket we can actually draw inferences in terms of uh, what is the pattern of consumption hmm. across income groups now we had three I- income income categories here 15 30 and 50 and we find that the consumption behavior is entirely different according to this hmm. Hmm. um now um, once when we have such large scale data then we can draw a lot of inferences hmm. Hmm. for example one straight inference that we see from this is that the percentage of money that is spent on food yeah is actually uh, n- not at the same level as the increase in income mm-hmm. or let me put it differently if you find that there is a 10% increase in income uh, the increase in the money spent on food is not 10% 10% it is slightly less right because you know your you reach a saturation your satisfaction and your utilities everything reaches a plateau in in terms of food food consumption and that is why we find that you know uh, large scale surveys gives you know very very interesting insights in terms of consumption in an economy mm. 